thanks this morning to all of you that have come to be with us. Uh, some from near and some from far. Mary would have been humbly proud today under this condition to see so many to show up. We are going to follow the family's instruction and follow our program as it has been outlined. Let's bow our heads today. Eternal God, our Father, we come together in the name of Jesus. Recognizing, Lord, in times like these, we recognize we need a Savior, we need help, we need strength, we need power. So God, we come today, Lord, looking to Thee. You said you'd be an ever-present help in our time of need. You told us, Lord, to come boldly to the throne of grace, find grace and help. Well, God, we're here today. Lord, we're here with tears in our eyes. We're here, Lord, with pain of loss in our hearts. We're here, God, desperately crying out, come by here, Lord. Come by here, Lord, and give your people comfort. Come by here and give your people strength. Come by here and give your people peace. And God, today, in the name of Jesus, may we celebrate a life well lived with a determination, O oh God, that on that day, when thou shalt come in the clouds of glory, we'll be ready, Lord, to see you and to reunite with her and all those that have closed their eyes with a blessed hope in their heart. So, Lord, today, be whatever this family needs to be. Be God today, we pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've stripped the reading, the Old Testament. Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 43, 2-3. It said, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not amazed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the righteous hand of my righteousness. When thou present, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And though the rivers, and through the river, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. New Testament Scripture, Romans 8, 35-37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or prosecution, or phantom, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor light, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
those who don't know me, I'm Fendi and uh, I'm Tian's husband. Over the last 13, 14 or so years, I've gotten to know my mother-in-law pretty well. And if I know anything about her, this morning she doesn't want you to be crying. She wants you here celebrating her life. And so a message that I feel like she wanted me to give to you. She wanted me to say, God is good. I say, God is good. And all the time, and somebody said that is his nature. Um, we left here, my wife and family, we left here on a Sunday. On the following Monday, Antonio calls us and tells us he's taking mom back to the hospital. And uh, we're like, okay, waiting on the results, but she's going to be okay. A few minutes later, he calls and tells us, you know, the worst. And so my wife immediately jumped on an airplane and came back here to Alabama from Orlando. And I was behind with the boys, you know, and we, we drove up. But I couldn't help but feel that I needed to be comforting her. And so I just sent a few words to her. Not knowing, you know, I would be standing here today. Um, just words of encouragement for, for my wife. But she asked if I could share that with you because the family needs healing at this time. Um, so if you will bear with me. The greater the storm, the brighter the rainbow. Our hearts are torn, but she's around when the wind blows. So when you feel a little tickle, when on the wind, on the tiniest tip of your nose, you can smile and say, there she goes. Pull out your camera phone and strike a pose, knowing that it won't capture her true essence and knowing that you're the only one that will ever know that you felt her presence. She was called home shortly after we smiled together and opened presents. But what a gift it was to lay eyes on her that final time. All the love we got from her, the wisdom we gleaned from her. Yes, it hurts more than words can explain. But she's no longer in suffering, and that's clear as a window pane. So cry we must to express our sympathy. Because we knew her well, we express it as empathy. On the, so her being called home will not leave us empty, see? On the contrary, it will leave, leave us full as she used to be. My mother-in-law would always say how she was full of emotion when we came together. She was full of love, not sorrow, though we know we are living on time which is borrowed. Full of collaboration, not spite nor isolation. For we know that the evil one will make haste to such a location. Let's put away family feuds and sibling rivalry. Let's not let this moment pass by while we sit idly. We will see her smile again, so be consoled. We will stand together in strength. We will never fold. Amen. Amen. Good morning. With sympathy from the loss, for the loss of your mom. Her voice will echo in memories you hold. Her smile will warm you through stories retold. Her love will touch you in spirit each day. Her life will be treasured in beautiful ways. Praying you're comforted by memories and held close in God's love as you grieve. Signed, Conlon, Christy, Eric, Belinda, and Lindsay. praying for you. This brings a prayer that God above will comfort you with his great love. And may the strength of your belief help guide you through this time of grief. With deepest loving sympathy, love the Harris family. Family members, we would like to acknowledge that the family wishes to acknowledge you all with deep appreciation, the many expressions of love, concern and kindness shown to them during their hour of bereavement. May God bless and keep you, the Tinsley family. Thank you very much. 
It's time now for remarks, and the family is requesting that you hold them to about two minutes. We will let it go, and if we see we need to cut it, we'll cut it. So, time for remarks. I had to say something for my aunt. She was a very loving person. She didn't mind giving. I used to spend a lot of time hanging around that house up there on that hill. Up on that hill, you find a good meal. Y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> You're known to make a good meal up on that hill. First of all, my uncle, he was a, uh, he thought he was a chef. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he would fix some meal in a heartbeat. He loved cooking. And he always wants you to test it out, see if, it is, see if it's any good. He'll bring it to you and check it out. Well, like I said, Mary, Nate, Gordon, I did. You can go there and I guarantee you. One thing, you ain't gonna go to the house and leave without some food. They love to cook. Uh, and she loved to eat. So, I just want you all to realize that even though she's gone, she's still with you in spirit, in your heart. You have no reason to worry or be concerned anymore. Because I know when you're away from home and she's there alone, she's constantly on your mind. So now you don't have to worry about that. She's in a special place in your heart. So I just wanted to say to the family, be strong, because God got it. We don't got it. God got it.
Ooh, okay. For those that don't know me, I'm her son, Quentin's daughter. It took a lot for me to be here because I couldn't come to terms with seeing her laying right there. It was She was so gentle and so kind. Her strength, I tell people all the time, I said people couldn't even stomach to have that she's done or been through and still smile like she's okay. As I pulled out of her, pulled from the house last night, I just sat there and I just cried. But I knew she was at peace. I just kept hearing her voice. Grandma, all right. And I still call her phone just so I can just hear her voice smell. This is Mary Tinsley. I said, come on, Grandma. <laughs> then when I pulled out and I sat there, Bill with his grandma hands came on and I said, that's it. She all right? Yes. It's like even when I knew it was saying grandma's hands, I knew it was saying God's hands too. Yes, yes, indeed. Come on now. And I couldn't sit there and I couldn't question God because I knew her strength. I knew she was tired. But I knew at the end, I was like, she all right? I can't sit there and question God about nothing because he knew, he knew better than me. I couldn't lean on my own understanding. As I drove here, I just said, grandma, give me the strength to be okay. And when I got to that spot, reality hit my knees. It was just like, all right, come on. And I said, okay. It's just the family. And I know we all going on to our own different lives back to normal of what we think is normal. Mm -hmm. Just stand, we gotta stand together. We can't keep coming here yes. doing yes. sad occasions yes, yes. when there's so much life to be celebrated now. Uh -huh. Cause right there, that's a lady, that's a woman life well lived. And as I prayed this morning, I said, grandma, if I ain't never said nothing else, every time I got off the phone with her, she said, I'm proud of you and I love you. And I stood on that. I said, grandma, it's hard cause I still, it's just moments where I'm like, I wish I could just pick up the phone and call my dad. She said, you know, he proud of you. I was like, Grandma, but it's hard. But that gentle voice eased that pain out of my heart. Mm -hmm. It eased it out of my heart. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, Grandma, I wish I had some more time with you. Time is precious. Life is precious. Don't let time get away. You holding hate in your heart towards people when you could be gone tomorrow. When I got that phone call, I sat in the bed and froze. I went to work for 35 minutes. My team said, why are you here? I said, I don't know. And I thought I could get my mind off of it, but that hurt, that hurt I don't wish on nobody. Don't let it get to another moment like this where we all gotta come together for a sad occasion like this. Life, life is short. Love on each other, pray for one another, hug each other, call, pick up the phone and call people because I still call her phone thinking she's picking up. But I say that to say, Grandma, job, job well done, job well done, job well done. Good morning. I know as Sister Tinsley. I grew up in the church. I can honestly say she was the sweetest, kindest person I ever, ever met. When I lost my mom, it's been over 19 years, she told me she'll be my mom for, for me. And she was. And when I lost my brother, she came down to Auburn and brought a plate, not a plate, a buffet <laughs> of food. We, she said you could eat on that food for a week. And we did. I'm telling you, I feel y'all pain. I, everybody has their own relationship with their parents. But this one right here is hard. It's hard when you don't have anyone sometimes. You don't have a mom. You don't have a dad. You need guidance. It's hard. So I just want y'all to know if you feel feel 
deep in your heart, you'll know and cherish the memories. That's what gets you through the memories. The, all the memories that you had with her will get you through. That's how it gets me through. That's how it gets me through. But it still hurts. And nothing's going to ease the pain of your mother. That's your mother. We love her. But Sister Tinsley, we're going to remember all the memories. Thank you. At this time, Orisha, go on and play for us and sing and read the obituary silently. Antonio for even having me here for this moment. One thing I know about y'all mother, one thing I know about Sister Tinsley, she loved music. She, as a kid, I remember going to Crisis the Answer, Seventh-day Adventist Church, way down in Hertzboro, Alabama. As a kid, I could count on a few people that's gonna smile all the time and just always seem like they were happy with life. And as a kid, you need that. Instead of people going around with a frown, being sad, all depressed, one of those persons I clearly remember is Sister Tinsley. And I appreciate, you know, her love for God and her love for music. You know, that's vital. So I know it's COVID-19. I'm going to stay real far from the mic because I have to sing with my mask off. We outside. I need y'all to use y'all hands, right? We just read the obituary. Just put your hands together right there. Yep, right there. I ain't gonna blast the speaker because we outside. So um, basically this song is clearly called God Is My Everything.
Stayed up late last night thinking and praying about this all week as well. How do I give comfort to my family when I'm uncomfortable? How do I convince someone not to be sad when I'm sad? How do I convince someone to not feel emotions when I'm emotional? I've heard many people say, uh, Antonio, get it together. Uh, make sure you're good for everybody else. But I got a good friend of mine that said, Antonio, you, uh, you, are, you can feel any way you want to feel. Let it out. Don't hold it in. Feel any way you want to feel. Because Jesus understands how you feel. They say, you know, he made you with these emotions. And it wouldn't be a privilege to say, I won't use these emotions. Because he made you with them. And I thought about something. How far would God go to save me? What steps would he take to save me, to save you? What if the pain that you feel sometimes is him trying to save you? What if my, my, my mother was put to sleep because God said, this is your time and I can't let you go any further because you might get lost. So therefore, I got to put you to sleep so I can save you. What if that's it? I saw some of my coworkers out here today, didn't know they was coming. I saw my church members, one of my dear sisters, I said she was my sister from a different mister. And she showed up. I saw my pastor show up. Not just my pastor, he's a friend. I saw one of my good friends show up from over here. I saw people show up and I was like, man, my mom touched so many people. Her, her life touched so many people, not because it was just her, it's because who was inside of her. I was telling someone the other day, I said, you think about the legacy that a person gives you me like I still feel my mother but you know the reason why I feel my mother is because the DNA in my body is from my mother y'all don't understand me the DNA in my body is from my father so as far as I am a tensely I want y'all to know as well that I'm also a steel but today I want to say something briefly about the day death was defeated see what keeps me going is that I know that death does not have the power that we thought it had and I wrote down a couple of things today to let you know who defeated this death. And I'm going to read this. Uh, it's a couple of Bible text, uh, texts I'm going to read to you, but I'm going to say something a little bit about it. John 10, 17, verse 18. This thing is New King James Version. It says, therefore, my father loves me. This is Jesus speaking. Because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I received from the Father. So Jesus is letting you know that he had this power to lay down his life and also he had this power to take it back up. Y'all don't hear me. So when Jesus rose from the dead, he did something as well. My Bible lets me know that when he rose from the dead, he did something that no other human ever did. He rose from the dead and he stayed alive. See, there were always wives tales of people that rose from the dead and died again. But when Jesus rose, he didn't just rise from the dead. My Bible lets me know that he defeated death. Right. See, death does not have the power that it used to have on us, that that will be sleep without resurrection. I need y'all to understand this. Before we think about all of the pain we feel, there will come a day. And I've said this many times when the gravity don't even work no more. Uh -huh. There will come a day. When we look around and be like, man, I see people I've never seen before. There will come a day when the loved ones you've seen before will come up out of their grave. That's what my Bible tells me. Yes, I know a lot of people have other views, but I just want to read what Bible says. I just want to go what Bible says today. I'm just going with Bible. And I know I want y'all to hear this. Uh, this is coming from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And I need to read it to you when you hear it. The apostle is saying, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest your sorrows and others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and he rose again, even so God will bring him those who sleep in Jesus. And I know my mama is sleeping in Jesus. I want you to understand that today. She is sleeping in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that who he or our lives remain until the coming of the Lord will be by no means perceived those who are asleep. I want you to know what's going to happen when the morning comes. When the morning comes, my Bible says, for the Lord himself 
So he is not going to send nobody else to come get us. He's coming himself. Now, he could have sent some mighty angels. He could have sent some other heavenly hosts. My Bible says, but the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Y'all don't understand me. That means that if you lay in that grave, my Bible says that same power that Jesus used when he rose out the grave, he's going to come back and speak it. Like we say, speak it to existence. He's going to speak it and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive or remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord and in the air. And thus we shall always be for the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So we can talk about a lot of different things, and I know the pain that I feel is unbearable. I know the pain that my sisters feel is unbearable. I know the pain to feel that our siblings are unbearable. I can see the pain all around. But weeping may endure for a night. But I want you to know that joy comes in the morning. And when the morning comes, when I see Jesus, when you see Jesus, you look around and be like, I see my father, I see my cousin, I see my mama, I see everybody around. When the morning comes, when nobody can say anything else, when the morning comes, when I see my Jesus, I will see my mama, I will see my father. When the morning comes, even though the pain is temporary, I look at it, what does God take for just to save a person like me? I saw family that probably ain't even hardly talked to each other in years. Uh -huh. And my mother died. We get together like we ain't never missed a beat. Yes, I spent a whole week with my sisters. And I ain't spent a week with my sisters since I was a child. And I was like, God, in death, you still brought something good. Yes, and the same day in his death, he brought something good. Yes, death has no power over us anymore. Because yes, my Bible says that when he comes back, yes, sir. With the voice of an archangel, yes, sir. that means it's going to be loud. Uh -huh. When he comes back, yes, when he comes back, all the tears will have to go away. Yes, when he comes back, you may be able to look through your hand like you've never seen. Yes, sir. When he comes back, I can see my father saying, son, we made it. Y'all yes, don't understand what I'm saying. Yes, when he comes back, I can look over and see my brothers and say, man, we done made it. Yes, uh, when he comes back, I can look over at my mom and say, we done made it. Y'all yes, don't understand. I can look over and see my sisters and say, we done made it. Yes, when he comes back, I can look over and see my brother-in-law and say, we made it. When he comes back, I can look over and see the cousins who said they done made it. Because even if you don't believe, the reality is morning will come and he will come back. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah, somebody. I was given my assignment. Basically told what they wanted. And then when I got here, my brother come up and said, I'm going to preach. <laughs> so you've gotten the word. We can go home now. But let's pray. Father, come close now. Closer than you've been all day to each and every one of us within the sound of my voice. Touch minds here today, Lord. Touch hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. I, I've known the Tinsleys a long time. But when I came here as the senior district pastor, I really got to know Mary. That was back in 19 and... 96. You know, it's one thing to know people at a distance, but it's another thing to know them close up, to work with them, to endeavor to accomplish things together. The family, I know what you're going through in a way, because I've laid my daddy to rest. I laid my mother to rest. I laid my oldest brother to rest, my oldest sister to rest, 
and three of my younger siblings I've laid to rest. So I have a little acquaintance with death, and I know the effect that it has at times, but I also know Mary. I knew her dedication, her commitment, and long after I had left as the pastor, she would call me up and bounce some things off on me. You know, when you're having issues with somebody and you want assurance that you're doing right, you know, it's good to be able to have confidence in somebody that you can bounce some things off. You know, get that second opinion. And so I'm going to get started with you for just a few moments this way. Mary took this book and she began to study it, not just read it, study it. And she came upon several biblical truths that she made a portion of her lifestyle. She came across all through from Genesis to Revelation talking about the Sabbath. And even in Revelation, when it said, Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. You see, as black folks, we only have privileges down here. But God has given to us a right to the kingdom of heaven. We have a God-given right to make it to the kingdom of heaven. And if you don't take advantage of that right, shame on you. Mary took advantage of that right. She made up her mind she was going to serve God the way God wanted her to serve him. You know, that is Revelation 14 and verse 6. Come back and worship God the way the creator God, the way the creator God intended for you to worship him. You know, he that created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yeah, read it sometimes. Chapter 14. I'll end up there in a minute. But as she perused the Bible, she found out a lot of things. She found out about this man called Christ Jesus and how Jesus showed love and kindness and compassion to people. And she learned walking with Jesus to show love and concern and compassion with people. So she learned a lifestyle. She learned a diet program, too. I'm not going to talk about food. Everybody been talking about food here this morning. I'm not going there, but she learned a diet program, and she got on it. All from the Word. All from the Word. I want to read this, though. Just this little portion. No, you don't have your Bible, but hopefully I'll give it in a way that you'll store it up in your head. I'm in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11. The Bible records this, and this is the record. Yes. The what about it? The record. This is it. That God has given to us eternal life and that life is in his son did you get that god gave us that's all of us inclusive life eternal and that life is stored up in his son he that has the son has life and he that has not the son of god hath not life these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may, K-N-O-W, know. That word comes from a Greek word, gnosko. Gnosko means to know from a personal relationship. So Mary developed gnosko, a personal, intimate, close relationship with Jesus. Forgive my language. It's Bible. I can share it with you later. But she became impregnated with Jesus. These things I've written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son that you may know that ye have eternal life and that life you may believe 
is in the Son of God. So, folks, if you get Jesus in your life, and you don't have to tell nobody, because if you have Jesus in your life, and you come in contact with anybody, they'll be able to recognize that you have spent time with, with Jesus. They'll be able to recognize the difference that in your behavior. You have been with Jesus. And it has affected you. I started to say something else, but I don't even want to give it that much credit. But I want to say like COVID. <laughs> it takes over. It goes everywhere. Commercial, folks. I don't mind giving commercials every now and then. Commercial. We are in a pandemic. If you want to know what to do for your system in this pandemic, if you got a pen and a pencil, write it down. If you want to make sure you do not get COVID-19, here's what you have to do. All right? You've got to take D3-100, 5,000 IUs. Take it every day. D3-100, 5,000 IUs. Take vitamin C, 1,000. Vitamin C, 1,000. And take zinc, 100. And when COVID come to you, it's going to be like the devil coming to Christians. He, he knocks at your door. He's, oh, I, I'm sorry, because Jesus was sitting on your sofa. He walks back, back out. That's the way COVID will do you. All right? Now I got to finish this. I got to finish this. All right? I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right. John says he got caught up uh, on the Sabbath day on the Isle of Patmos and God had sent an angel to be with him and to talk with him and the angel had shared with him some things 14 and verse 13 of a revelation and as the angels had shared these things John said he heard a voice out of heaven and that voice said John Whatever you do, write this down. Etch this in the mind of the people on planet Earth. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. That is, folks. That is. When you, like Mary, have built a close, personal, intimate relationship with Jesus, uh, death is sweet. Yeah, I call it the bittersweet experience. Uh, it, it is sweet to the believer because they have hope. They are not ignorant. Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those that are asleep. Uh, she's just resting now, waiting resurrection morning. And I'm so glad that I spent time enough with her to know that, that she made sure She made sure, Revelation 20, that she was going to be accounted in the first resurrection and not in the next one. All right? For blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection over which death has no power. She it that in her mind. Revelation 14. Verse 13, yea, said the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God talking now. Yea, said the Spirit, that they might rest from their labors. You see, there's a resting mode for the Christian. Some of them. A few are going to be alive to see him when he come back. But most of them are going to Go like Mary. They're going to rest from their labors. And their works do follow them. I could take the rest of the morning on into the afternoon and all day tomorrow and then some. Talking about her labors and the things that she did. Both on her job, we would talk about her job. 
and in the church. You have in your head things that you remember that she did. Uh, that's what the Bible means. Uh, that effect that she had on you will carry over on you for the rest of your life. You can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. All right, so let me quickly tell you what I just told you this morning. Mary searched the book. She found out what God wanted her to do, and she did it. And now she's resting, waiting resurrection morning. And the Lord is going to come. As my brother said, the Lord himself. When I came through high school, I had an English professor that was very strict, Ma Hagen. Never forget her. She says, Sarge, you never say Johnny he or Sally she. That's double subjects. You don't do that. Okay? Now that's good English. That's good English. And I learned good English. But, but when I studied the Greek language, uh, the Greek would put uh, double subjects for emphasis. And so when the Bible said the Lord himself is emphasizing that it's the Lord Jesus that's coming back, not another. The one who came and suffered and bled and died for us that we may have a right, not a privilege, but a right to the tree of life. That we will be able to go not just to the gates, but through the gates into the holy city. That same one is going to burst open the clouds of heaven. He's going to say to the north, give them up. He's going to say to the south, hold not back. He's going to say, bring my people from afar, even from the ends of the earth. And they're going to come. They're going to come from all over. You talk about a reunion that's going to be. I've gone three quarters of the globe. I've been all into Africa and Asia and Europe. And, and, and I've been into uh, the Far East and, and the Middle East. And we baptized people everywhere we went. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when all of the redeemed are caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and to ever be with the Lord. Can you just imagine what that's going to be like when the people from all over the world are coming together? Hey, let me let you in on a little secret. There will not be a language barrier there anymore. We'll all be able to communicate one with the other. Oh, I've translated. I've had more translators in my life than a little bit. And I would speak and they would speak and and I would speak and they would speak. But when I get to the kingdom of heaven, I can walk up to anybody and be able to speak their language. What a day that's going to be. We're all going to be there that do like Mary. That study the book and follow the council. It's just that simple. And those that do not study the book, I'm not saying read it. You can read it from Genesis to Revelation and not understand a thing it said. And you can come away with so many different concepts and ideas. And you can go around lying to folks say, I got it from the Bible. <laughs> but if you study it, like Mary did, you'll come to one conclusion. And that is, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I could feel his presence all around me. I could sense he's near. And just the time I need him, he's always there. <laughs> Let me give it to you this way. Jesus is the light at the end of the tunnel even though you may be in the middle of the tunnel he's the light at the end of the tunnel and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you so live that when your summons come to join the innumerable caravan 
where each of us must take our chamber in the silent halls of death. Die go not like that quarry slave scourge to his dungeon but sustain like Mary and soothe like Mary wrap the drapery of your couch about you and lie down to pleasant dreams loving father thank you for allowing Mary fall asleep in you. Thank you. <laughs> we always say weeping will endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. And I've been asking you, Lord, how long is this night? Hasten the morning. We look forward to that day. We are hopeful for that day. We are people of hope. We're not in despair today. We know the rest of the story. <laughs> Let me tell you that one. I interrupt this prayer just a moment to tell you that story. When I was a little boy, there was a young gentleman named Paul Harvey. He was a news commentator, and he would always come on at the end, and, and he would always sound off by saying, now that's the rest of the story. And shortly before Paul Harvey died, I was out in California and a gentleman came up to me. He said, uh, I was quoting Paul Harvey. He walked over, he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Sims, guess what? Let me tell you the rest of the story. He said, Paul Harvey became a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church before he died. Now that's the rest of Paul Harvey's story. Continuing to pray, Lord, may we, may we fall on the rock and be broken before the rock fall and crushes us. May we make a total surrender to thee like you made a total surrender for us. And one day, may we be faithful, as Paul said, until the end. May we fight a good fight. May we finish our course so that we, along with so many others might be caught up to meet you in the air and ever be with you. Bless us to this end, we pray in the worthy name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have the committal here. So Risha is going to play for us, pass me an auto gentle Savior. That's going to lead us in that song. Let's sing that song, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Hear My Humble Cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by.
symbol, so to speak, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, until that great and awesome morning when the Lord shall come. There'll be an angel posted wherever she's laid to rest. That angel will be there. But God knows where his children are. But it'd be posted just to make sure that she is in his care. And I want to let you know today, God, God, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And I want to extend the deepest condolences from Christ as the answer. And if anything we can do, please let us know. But I also want to extend condolences from my brother and the president of the South Central Conference of over 35,000 people. Sorry he couldn't be here today, but he wants to let you all know he loves you, you're in his prayers. And he trusts that God's got you. Let us bow here for prayer. Loving Father, we're so thankful for a word from the Lord. You have given us comfort today, O oh Father, that soon and very soon you will come and death will be no more. You will gather your people together that we can go back and live throughout the ceasing ages of eternity where sickness and affliction shall not rise the second time. We will all serve and we will obey. Father, until that time, we pray that you will watch over us and keep us Keep us, Father, for we cannot keep ourselves and keep our minds stayed on you. That when you do come, we will have that blessed hope with you. And above all things, Father, when you come, save us all without the loss of one. It's my humble prayer in the name of Jesus that the people say amen, amen, amen.